Well, the IMF sees India and China accounting for nearly half of all global growth this year. Kate Fisher spoke with IMF's director of the Asia-Pacific Department, Krishna Srinivasan, who explained how prospects for the two Asian giants could spill over to other countries in the region. The world economic outlook says for the next five years, you know, we're not going to see much improvement. Are you still optimistic that this, things will improve, especially for a region where there are so many people living in poverty? So I think, I mean, yes, you're right. There are some news which have not been particularly encouraging, uh, especially we've had so many shocks. You know, we had the COVID shock, then we had the war, the cost of living crisis, then we have these financial stresses. But again, let's look at the positive. You know, China has rebounded. Uh, it's coming along strongly. Again, even for a country like China, the longer term prospects have to be addressed through policy reforms. So how countries like China and India go do over the next few years will have an important bearing on prospects for Asia. You know, let's not forget that trade in Asia, intra-regional trade, is 50%. So if countries like India and China continue to do well, then that's a big flip for the countries in the region. But again, there are downside risks, so we have to put things on balance. There are good news, there is bad news. Let's see how things add up in balance. If you recollect, in October of last year, we had talked about three headwinds to growth in Asia, one of which was slowing growth in China, which was, you know, by historic proportions was on the lower side. But uh, in December, they opened up the economy and opened up much faster than we anticipated. So for this year, uh, we have projected growth at 5.2 percent. And that comes, you know, on the heels of 3.0 percent in 2022. So big increase in, uh, in the growth forecast for China. And again, uh, China is a very important player, both for the global and for the region. And our numbers show that for every one percentage point increase in China's growth, countries in the region grow by 0.3 percentage points over the medium term. So China opening up and growing at that pace is really big for the region and for the world. And you've just had a trip to China. Were you kind of encouraged by your meetings there? Absolutely. We had an opportunity to meet. I accompanied the imagine director there. Uh, we had an opportunity to meet with a new economic team. Some members are new. And we had a very good discussion on how China sees global outlook and challenges. We talked a lot about Chinese economy and also on some institution, institutional issues like debt, which have been quite central for our engagement with China. And how um, important is it that the Chinese are here in person this year, first time since the pandemic? I think it makes a big difference. I think uh, in-person interactions are very in, are very valuable, and uh, you know seeing everybody else here in at the at the spring meeting is a big plus. And so for the Chinese and for us, the interaction in person is very important. No substitute for that. And moving to India, its economy is expected to hold up this year, but you know the World Bank and the ADB have slashed their forecasts. What are the main pain points for India, do you think, going forward? So we have revised our growth forecast for India from 6.1% uh, to 5.9%. Uh, to again, that reflects some slowing in consumption. But again, investment is, uh, is, is doing quite well. And service exports in, from India are booming. So overall, uh, India is still a relative bright spot in the world economy. And what are the pain uh, points you ask? I think for most countries in the region, I think there is the slowness of uh, external demand is slowing both from the US and from Europe. I think that's an important factor for every country in the region. And that's one. And also the question of you know, the interest rates being high, what does it mean for investment and consumption for domestic demand in general? So I think that's an important issue to think about when you talk about prospects for India and for other countries in the region. Again, inflation is also very high in India. It's above the comfort zone. The central bank is doing a very good job of tightening monetary policy. But the question is, what does it mean for uh, in a high interest rate, what does it mean for investment and consumption? I think that's an important question to ask. And what about the banking crisis? Is there still a lingering impact across the region from that? So again, the direct impact of the turmoil in the banking sector in, in both in the US and Europe has had much uh, muted impact on Asia. Again, Asian banking systems are pretty well capitalized. They have you know, liquidity ratios are pretty good. But again, uh, if there is a further stress in the banking sector, that could be an important downside risk for prospects in Asia.
So you are watching that carefully? We are watching that carefully. We monitor that quite carefully. And again, we've done some analysis in terms of what it means uh, if things, uh, you know, if the, if the turmoil intensified. But as, at this point in time, the direct impact of what's happened in both Europe and US has been quite muted on Asia.